Hey neighbor, why did your seeds not germinate? Well, we're gonna talk about that today. Lay out some reasons why. We've had an interesting spring and we've had some issues with seed germination. I know you have as well. We're gonna cover that today, give you some new enlightening information you may or may not know, and maybe we can figure this thing out together how you can be more successful. Number one is seed germination, bad seed. It does happen. So if you're buying seed from a good company such as Hoss, and look here, there's more than us out there. We really do stringent testing on our seeds and we're really proud of that fact. It does happen occasionally we'll have the bottom fall out on the seed and we have to throw it away. We do, we do testing every, every month, we, we pull germ test. We're not the only ones, other companies do that as well. Where you get into trouble is buying these bargain basement seeds. If you're buying cheap seeds, then you're not probably getting good tested seeds and you could be getting old seeds. If you're buying from the big box stores or you're buying from any of those places and you're not paying very much for a seed or even if you're ordering them online and they're bargain basement price seeds, you can bet it's not the highest quality seeds out there. That being said, if you're ordering from a good seed company and there's several of us out there, I include us in with that, more than likely your seed germination is going to be good. Now we've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in our seed storage where we keep our seeds at, but we're not the only company out there either. These other companies that have just as good or not better facilities we are, we've got. We're extremely proud of what we got, but we're not the only one, okay? So let's get that out of, the, out of there to start with. We're not, we, we think we're one of the best, but we're not one of the only best out there. If you buy good quality seeds and you pay for them, you, you probably have got good germination seeds. Number two, you gotta have correct moisture and you gotta have correct temperature to get seeds to germinate. Now with mother nature, especially when we're planting in ground, can throw us a curve on some of these things and we can get these downfalls of rain. We cannot have enough rain, it could be dry on us or we can have these fluctuations in temperatures like we've had this spring we have these cool nights. Any of those things right there can have an effect on germination of seeds. If we're growing in a controlled atmosphere as a greenhouse, we can control that a lot better. But even then, I find sometimes people don't keep their moisture regulated right or even their temperature right and they don't get correct germination. So good and correct moisture and good and correct temperature has a, a big effect on your seed germination. All right, so let's get into number three, and this is one we're really gonna work on and pay a lot of attention to today, and that is soil-borne organisms that can have an adverse effect on our seed germination. Because I think this is more widespread than we think it is, and I think this is what causes a lot of our issues, especially in early spring. Now, as home gardeners, we always like to get out there and get planted early. That's just the nature of a gardener. We want to get those plants in early as we can to get our cycle going, to get those crops coming in, we can enjoy them. But a lot of times, and I'm including me into this, we plant into cool, wet soils. And even though we got good seed, we plant them into a soil that's going, we're going to have some problems with fungus and some diseases in the soil there that's going to cause those seeds not to come up. We've seen a lot more of that this spring than we've had in the last couple of years because we've had those cool nights and we've had a lot of moisture in the ground. So we've seen a lot of situations where we had good seed, everything looked perfect. We did everything within our power to do it right, but we got poor germination. Now, the, the crops that seem to have the worst problem with this is legumes. Uh, cucurbits, any of the legumes, cucurbits, and corns. Those are the ones we seem to have the most problem with these soil-borne diseases and what we call dampening off. That's when that seed germinates and it starts to come off, it just rots. Now, how do we counteract that? Well, there's not a whole lot we can do with what we call untreated seeds. And unfortunately, in the home garden industry out there, most of us sell untreated seeds because that's what the consumer demands is untreated seeds. Now, there are treated seeds out there that some of the people sell. We have a few treated seeds in our offering as well, but not a lot. Most of ours are untreated because that's what you as the home gardener demands. But I feel like that's what we need to talk about today, treated seeds. So what is treated seeds? Well, treated seeds is a seed that something has been added to it. The first thing we need to do is understand treated seed has nothing, and I mean nothing to do with GMO seeds or genetically modified seeds. 
two completely separate issues. Don't let anybody bring that into the conversation when you're talking about treated seeds because they have nothing to do with one another. A treated seed is when you take a some type of a compound or anything to add to that seed. And most of the time it is as a, a coating on the seed. The most common treated seeds are seeds treated with fungicides and insecticides. Fungicides help with things like root rot, dampening off, and the seed rotting in the soil. Insecticides, seeds coated with insecticides help with things, most of them are systemic with those insects attacking those real young plants. There's also nemicides out there, which is very not very common, but they are out there that, that's uh, chemical coated on the seed that helps with nematode control. Then we have things on some legumes where we coat them with inoculants. Inoculants is not a pesticide, it's actually a beneficial bacteria that helps that legume with its correlation with other bacteria in the soil. And now we're seeing some new things out there such as biologicals. These biologicals are beneficial bacteria and things like that are coated on the seed. We're seeing a lot of this up and coming, this is new for organic seeds and also for conventional seeds, but it's a new way of thinking about treated seeds. Now, I'm no expert on treated seeds, but I feel like I know more than the average person does. So we're gonna go through this right now, I'll try to explain it to you the best I can. Most of the insecticides out there that are treated, the treat seeds are of the neonicotoid class of chemistry, which I'm not a fan of because they are systemics. Now, when we start talking about treated seed and using treated seeds, we got to understand we don't want to do anything that's going to cancel out what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve growing good, healthy food. We don't want to do anything to get us there that's going to cancel out of what we're trying to do of growing that good, healthy food. And these neonicotoids do that for me. I don't use neonicotoids. We don't sell neonicotoid treated seeds. I am against that. However, let's look at fungicide treated seeds. Now there's a handful of, of chemicals out there that we use to treat these seeds here. The most common ones are gonna be thyram and captan. There's some more out there, but that's the most common two we see. And these are very low in their toxicity. And, and in my opinion, we need to think about using some of these because it can make a big difference in being successful germinating our seeds. In these cool, wet soils that we have, where we get these seed rot sometimes and we get these bad, germination, some of these seed treatments right here could be extremely beneficial in getting our plants up and growing because they fight off these ever-present bad fungi that's in our soil. All right, so right here is an example of an inoculate seed that's treated. You see this right here? This is clover seed, and this clover seed has been treated with an inoculant. That inoculant is extremely safe. All that does is a beneficial bacteria, bacteria that helps that seed grow into a plant that does its thing as far as attracting nitrogen. I'm a big fan of applying inoculates and treating those seeds with that because it makes my life a lot easier. Next, we have some pea seeds right here. And you see that right there, that zipper pea seed is treated. And one reason I know why is because it is a different color. When we have fungicide treated seeds, just about always they are colored. And that gives us an indication that seed is treated. It's either green or it could be pink or it can be red. It can be a, a different colors. Most of them are brighter colors. We see here a pink seed. Right beside it here, we have a pea seed that is not treated. This is a raw seed right here. So that kind of gives you a difference there of being able to look at treated seed and untreated pea seed. Next, we have corn seed. The red seed you see right there is treated. The one next to it there is untreated. And both of those that you see, the red and the pink, are treated with fungicides. Now there are several kinds of fungi that causes seed rot. Now this fungi is ever present in soil. We just need the right conditions and a host for this to happen. The ones we see most often that cause seed rot and dampening off and seedlings disease is Rhizoctonia, Fusarium, and a couple of the water molds, Pythium and Phytophthora. Folks, this right here is Bailey 2 peanut seed, which was untreated seeds. We had some customers complain that they didn't get very good germination with their peanut seed. And that's not really uncommon for us in the springtime. But this untreated seed right here that we sold, and we sold a lot of it, and we still got some for sale, we had some customers and some very good growers that I'm aware of say that they just got zero or very little germination. So what I did, as I do sometimes when we get complaints, I do an in-house germination 
study or I plant some here to see if I can get uh, an idea if there is a problem with the seed of the germination. Now I planted this in the greenhouse as I do just about all of my germ test things that we do in house and I use a sterile mix and I control the moisture in here. So this is what I would consider ideal conditions. And this is basically the same conditions that when the seed goes to the seed lab, that it, that it gets a, uh, the growing method where they do so that they can get the germination rate. So when I planted these in here, I give it a few days and I still got some coming up, but I come out here early this morning to do a count here. And I have got somewhere in the neighborhood of an 80% germination on these peanut plants here. And I still got more coming up there. So it could end up being in the 85 to 90% range. But we had customers, I'm talking about good growers, people that know what they're doing that's been gardening for years, get zero or very little germination. So do we discount that and say they did something wrong and tell them that they just, they did something wrong, they don't know what they're talking about? No. Here's where I think the problem lies at. I think it is a soil-borne disease that caused their issue. They did everything right, but they planted in cool, moist soils that they didn't have a lot of control over, and they had bad beneficial, bad bacteria in there, bad diseases in there that caused their seed rot. Now, did these customers get bad germination? Absolutely they did. It was no fault of theirs that they got bad germination. If they would have used treated seed, I can almost guarantee you they would have got better results. If they would have grown in a controlled atmosphere, I can almost guarantee you they would have got better results. But the fact of the matter is there's a lot of things that we plant in the grounds. Never do I transplant peanuts. Uh, squash and cucumbers for me is something I normally don't transplant. I plant those in the garden. But we can have problems in our soil that causes these seed rots and causes this dampening off. Now you see these two rows of squash here, ain't they pretty? Well, there's a little story behind them. I come out here the 1st of March and I planted these two rows in squash. I may have gotten 20% germination. It was very poor. I was disappointed. I think, man, I may have a problem with some of these seeds. So I waited two weeks. I come back, I used the same exact lot, same exact variety, and I replanted these two rows here and got almost 100% germination there. What happened to my first planting? I got poor germination. What was the reason behind that is because I planted in cool soils and one of those soil diseases that we talked about attacked my seeds and I was able not to get very good germination. You know, I, sometimes it's even hard for somebody like me that's been doing it a while, what did I do wrong? Well, the fact of the matter is I planted a little too early. A lot of years, that would be a perfect time to plant, but Mother Nature had other plans for us this year. She had those cool nights. We had uh, probably more moisture than what we needed, and it caused problems. Now, the fact of the matter is, if I had planted treated seeds the first time, more than likely, I would have got the same germination that I got the second go around. So folks, here is the question for everyone out there. Do we or should we be using more fungicide treated seeds to be more successful? Or do we need to continue to use untreated seed and understand we're gonna have a sporadic germination, especially in the early springtime? That's something that I'm battling with right now. You know, we need to understand there's gonna be trade-offs with everything, but at the end of the day, we wanna be successful. For us, for a seed company, it is disheartening. I'm telling you, it really tears at me when I get an email or a phone call and they tell us how disappointed they are with our seeds. And I know for a fact there's good germination on that because we've done our due diligence on our quality checks to make sure that's good seed. So it really works at me and tears at me when that happens. And I try to convey to the customer, well, maybe we have other issues that cause those problems. Well, it, it seems like I'm trying to throw blame on something else at that point where the, the fact of the matter is I'm just trying to help people to be successful. But it's really hard to convey that message sometimes. So if a customer had to plant a treated seed to start with, they very well likely would have got good germination, would have been a happier customer. So what do we do as home gardeners? Do we plant more treated seed or do we continue to use untreated seed?